Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to this 21st lecture in this class. And today we are going to have to finish to the proof of a tier duality. And if we are lucky, uh, being able to state the Pontryagin-Tom theorem. Um, I'm, I think proving it would be a bit too ambitious. That was my original plan, but I don't think we're going to fit in it. And uh, so we'll finish the proof of the Pontryagin-Tom theorem next, next Monday. And some of the consequences. So, okay, so recall, the setup is we have M a closed smooth manifold. So compact without boundary. I want to prove that the dual of sigma infinity of M plus is Tom spectrum of the stable normal value. That is our goal. That's what we want. And uh, to do so, we have actually introduced a map as here that I called the fundamental map last time, but I think I want to call the fundamental class. I, uh, that was recall was constructed by embedding M inside Rn, which sits inside Sn, and taking the Pontryagin tom map. So we get a map sigma infinity Sn plus to nu, where nu is the normal bundle. And, oh, sorry, that's, well, okay, yeah, sigma infinity, whatever, that's intuitively, this is the map that sends every point of Sn outside of the normal bundle uh, to the base point, to the point at infinity of the Tom spectrum, and the normal bundle uh, to itself with the identity. And this is uh, sigma m s plus s, but in fact, we only care about this summoned. And then the suspending, since m uh, nu minus n is exactly minus the tangent bundle, since the the, uh, the tangent bundle of r to the n is trivial indeed. So n plus n nu plus tm is the is the trivial bundle. And actually, the other the other summon is not homotopic, so we don't really care about it. So I'm just discarding it. And I'm calling it the fundamental class because we will see. Well, we won't see it, but actually, it will a formal consequence from what we will see today. That, for example, suppose that M is H Z orientable, which is you know classically orientable. Then we get the map. So we get this, this fundamental map. I'm not sure what I should call it. Uh, we call it eta m. This maps to pi zero of hz tensor minus tm, which uh, sorry, not orientable. I should say oriented because I need an orientation to do the next step. And with the Tom isomorphism, I get pi n hz tensor sigma infinity plus m, which is h n m. And these, the image of these is exactly the fundamental class that you have seen. Yes. Classical notion of fundamental class. And these, well, okay, I don't quite know which definition you gave for the fundamental class, but this follows because the composition 
s to the tangent space to uh, sorry txm minus txm which is just a sphere where this is the Pontryagin tongue collapse map for an inclusion x into m is the identity. And these you can, well, it's just because the composition of Pontryagin tongue collapse map is Pontryagin tongue collapse maps. And then you just need to, to understand the Pontryagin tongue collapse map of the inclusion of a point into Sn. And uh, well, that's easy. Um, and so you see that over every point, this class restricts to a generator of the relative homology group. And this way, you can actually define a fundamental class for any E such that M is E oriented. With the same technique. Um, sorry, can you explain the last equality there, or maybe a can't turn? Well, I mean, this is this is the the the, the Tom uh, spectrum of the trivial vector bundle of rank zero uh, over this one point set. Uh, that's the sphere spectrum. Uh, I take it the co-limit of the sphere uh, over uh, over a point. I just get the sphere. Ah, yes, yes, right. Thank uh, you. And actually, I'm cheating in this proof. I'm actually using the Dispontrian Tom collapse map is the dual of the of the inclusion map, uh, which I haven't technically proven, but we, we will follow from the proof of a tier duality I will give. So. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to use this fundamental map to construct the evaluation and co-evaluation maps that we need. So we want, no, actually, let me copy this so I get the indexing right. Oh, yeah, here it is. So I want to construct an evaluation map, which is a map like this and a co-evaluation map, which is a map like this. Satisfying sun diagram. I'll spell out the diagram later, but first I want to do the I first want to give you the definition. So how do we do that? Well, evaluation is the composition of this. Oh, sorry, I should try to put the, the plus. Yeah. So we have this guy. Well, this guy, we can think of it as the Tom spectrum of M times M of the vector bundle zero comma minus tm. And this has a Pontryagin Tom collapse map to uh, sigma infinity plus n, which is just the, the Tom spectrum of the trivial vector bundle of rank zero over m, which is induced by the diagonal m times m. You can check that the normal bundle of the diagonal is just the tangent bundle. That's, uh, well, that's because uh, 
uh, on the map on, on tangent bundles here is just the diagonal inclusion of the tangent bundle of M into the tangent bundle of M plus the tangent bundle of M. And that's just the cooker, the normal bundle is the co-kernel of that, which is again the tangent bundle of M. And this is just the induced map on, on, on spectrum spectra from P from M to the point. And I keep putting a plus. So that's the evaluation map. And the question is the co-evaluation map. We're going to write it as the composition. And again, here there's going to be a Puntrialin Tom collapse map, which is our fundamental class. And then a map to oops, sorry, let's not write this to this Tom spectrum minus T and zero, which is just uh, and this is just delta lower star, the induced map on Tom spectra by the diagonal, since the restriction of minus T and zero to the diagonal is minus T M. Now I can finally precisely state a T duality. F and co F exceeded uh, M T M as the Spanier Whitehead dual of uh, sigma infinity and plus. And now this is a precise statement and saying that a couple of diagrams commute up to home too. And it's just a matter of verifying it. Selling it a bit short, perhaps. The verification is not completely trivial. This is nice and geometric. Okay, questions about the statement? Um, I have a question about the co-evaluation map. So what's what's the first, what's the eta map? Uh, is this a fundamental class that I was talking about? Ah, ah yes, yes. And then um, like this diagonal push forward, it's a little weird that it somehow gets sent to, like it's a map to something asymmetric. So you have the minus TM over the first component. And the zero over the second. Well, I mean, if you take, you know, this is this is a vector bundle over n times n. So what happens if you have, in general, if you have two vector bundles, sorry, e over x and f over x, and you think about it, the restriction of e times f along the diagonal is exactly the direct sum of the vector bundles. Uh, ah, yeah, okay. And you know, for every map f from x to y, I always get a map and, and v stable spherical vibration over y, I always get, you know, a canonical map like this. Ah, okay. And this if you think in the case of compact spaces, this is just, you know, uh, it's the, the map on one-point compactification induced by the inclusion of the total space in the vector bundle. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah I just needed a second to uh, mm -hmm. comprehend. Okay, cool. So yeah, you're right, it is asymmetric. And we are going to be, have to be a bit careful about this asymmetry, but it's all rigged, so it works. Uh, further questions? Okay, I'll need uh, to, to, to do this proof, I'll need a, uh, um, a, a notion from geometric topology that is going to be important uh, also later when we're going to do the Pontryagin Tom theorem. So I'm going to introduce it now, even if now we're not going to use it much. But 
So let f from m to m prime as smooth map of smooth manifolds and n inside of m prime uh, an embedded submanifold. Then we say f is transver oof, transverse to n, and it's written in this weird, this weird symbol. If for every x in m, such that f of x is in n, we have uh, the following property. We have the image of the tangent bundle at M and the tangent bundle at N generate the whole tangent bundle at M prime. Now this sum is in general not a direct sum. So the intuition here, here, uh, it's this is transverse. So if you think of like two two inclusions of two of a sum manifold, then this is not transverse. Okay. So because here you see the two tangent space, when you take their span, span everything, while here they do not span everything. And so I have this lemma, which is probably actually a theorem, but okay. So if F is transverse to N, then F inverse N is an embedded submanifold. Of uh, N and DF induces an isomorphism between the normal bundle of F inverse N in N and the pullback of the normal bundle of N in M prime. And okay, the proof is the proof is I'm secretly going to tell you that you already know this theorem under a different name. Well, or maybe you already know it if you've seen this stuff before, but you certainly know this theorem already and you've done it in probably either the first or the second year of the bachelor. I'm not exactly sure when it's done. Whenever you've done analysis in, in more variables. And this is, this is a local statement. So pick charts around uh, x in f inverse n and f of x in m prime. So we have some r to the m going to some r n times r k. So this is, this has become M and this has become M prime and N is R to the N times zero. And suppose F of zero equals zero and this is F, F prime. 
and F transverse to N now becomes just the statement that D zero, uh, sorry, not F F prime, F prime, F double prime, D zero F double prime is full rank. And therefore the thesis follows from the implicit function. Theorem. You unwrap what it is and the thesis is exactly the implicit function, function theorem. Uh, I'll, I think I'll leave you as an exercise uh, to, to check all the details, but in fact, this lemma is often called the implicit function theorem because that's what it is. And just stating in a more, in a, in a less coordinated way. Okay, but why do I care about this? Well, because from these, I can deduce the following lemma. So let F from M1, M2 smooth map, M2 inside M2 uh, and let's say that my manifolds here are compact, just to be sure. Um, and submanifold hold and F transverse to M2 and assume everything M1, M2, M2 compact. Then N1, let N1, the preimage of N2, which is a submanifold by the, the, the implicit function theorem. Then there is and let me call this I2, and sorry, and I1, the, the map from N1 inside the, uh, N1. Inclusion. Then there is a commutative diagram. Oh, sorry, uh, for every V vector bundle over N2. Yeah. So here I have the map that I was describing before. This is the induced map on Tom spectrum. And here I have the Pontryagin Tom map for I1, which goes to N. Style B plus mu, and here I have the Pontryagin Tom map for I2. Here I have the map induced by the restriction of N. Okay. And I know this lemma looks complicated, but in fact, it's very, it's quite simple. It's quite trivial, uh, but the, the important part is to understand the statement. We're going to need it uh, to change the order of compositions of some Pontiagin Tom and induced map. And we're going to prove the di di diagram. And I actually mean commutative this diagram of spectra, of course. There is secretly a homotopy here. But in fact, we're going to derive it from a strict diagram of spaces. So okay. is the statement of this lemma clear? And the proof is just uh, peak a uh, tubular neighborhood new inside M2 of N2. And uh, uh, small enough no, 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 small enough 
yeah, such that F inverse of new is a tubular neighborhood for M1. These you can always do. Uh, are, for example, by looking at locally, you ensure that new lands in each of those neat charts that we had before verifying the, the implicit function theorem. Uh, well, then the commutativity of the diagram uh, is clear because you can, well, let's ignore V for one second. You have a point here in M1. You can either collapse it to the thumb space of f inverse nu, which means sending it to f inverse nu if it lies in f inverse nu or to the base point otherwise. Or I can send it to m2 and send it to the thumb space of nu. And this is just the inclusion, this is just the, 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 the restriction of f here. And uh, well, and it's really, really clear that it commits uh, because to a point of M1, it either goes to the base point if it lies up outside of F inverse of nu, or it goes to F inverse of nu with the identity and then via F. So X in M1 goes to the base point if X is not if F inverse of nu and to F of X if X is in F inverse of nu. This is true, whichever way you go around the diagram. And uh, uh, to, to do it when you have a vector bundle, you just add a disk bundle to everything, but you don't change fundamentally what's going on. Okay. Is this clear? So, okay. Proof of Gia duality. Okay, we need to verify a certain, a bunch of diagrams. Let's verify the first one. So we have this diagram going here. And this is via the coevaluation tensor one. And this that goes to M minus Tn, and this is via one tensor the evaluation. But, well, now we need to throw in the definitions. This factor that, remember the evaluation factored as a map like this, which was the identity tensor of certain Pontryagin Tom map. And this is, uh, induced by the, the projection of M to the point. So now I'm going to rewrite this as M tensor M minus Tm comma zero. And this map then is therefore the induced map on the first projection, if you unwrap what it means. And this The horizontal map is the Pontryagin tom on a certain map G. So remember these, I can also see it as M tensor M tensor M, M minus Tm zero minus Tm. And G X Y is, uh, let me get it, the right one, yeah. X Y Y. Yeah, right, because the first coordinate is, it's just, I'm just tensoring the diagonal by an identity. Uh, 
uh, actually let me move it a bit downstairs because I think I think we're going to oh oh no I think we're going to need that space. Okay, and now let's do the same thing for the evaluation. These lands into m minus t m tensor m minus t m here, and that was just m times m minus t m uh, comma minus t m. And this is, in fact, the map on Tom Spectra by a certain f, which I'm going to write f y. It's the little brother of these. It's just x x y. And this map is well. This map I'll I'll say later what this map is. This missing map. It's built using the fundamental map, of course. So I guess maybe. I should just write ATM tensor one for now, and then we'll we'll work it out later. What it means. So our first step is well, let's simplify this horizontal composition at the top. So we want to find PTG composed with F lower star. But okay, let me write it. Oh, sorry, uh, where was I? Yes. Let me write it properly. So I have m times m minus tm comma minus tm going by f lower star to m times m times m minus tm comma zero minus tm. Uh, and this goes to m times m minus t m comma zero, and this is by a contracting term g. And the point is that I claim that I can factor it uh, through sigma infinity plus m here. Well, this is the contracting term of the diagonal, and this is the diagonal lower star. And that comes from the and that comes from the fact that f is transverse to delta m, and f inverse of m is. Uh, no, sorry, G is transverse, and G inverse of M is M times M sitting by uh, F into M times M times M. Okay, is, is this clear? Okay, so now let's go back to our diagram that I'm going to rewrite. We have uh, eta n tensor one goes to n times n minus tn. And now I can replace this thing by the contracting term of the diagonal. So uh, sigma infinity plus n. And then the lower star m times m minus t m comma zero. And this goes to m minus t m. Yeah, just t m via the projection star. Uh, pro the first projection, sorry, I think. Yeah. Okay. But okay, but now this is the identity. Uh, oh, 
Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that was that was something fishy. Uh, the, the the restriction of minus t m comma zero to the diagonal, of course, is minus t m. Is not uh, uh, is not uh, zero. Uh, sorry. Okay, and now that's just the identity because the projection one, I mean, that's projection one delta lower star, that's the identity. Okay, so the, the final point is you need to prove that this is the identity. And this is also a composite of 2.3 eigenton maps. So remember, we have our M sitting inside our N sitting inside SN. And what this composite here, so remember, eta M is essentially the Puntriagi map of this embedding here. I'm going to call it I, up to a shift that I'm I'm going to be a bit more careful in a second, actually. Like, why am I not careful already? It's sigma minus n of this Pontryagin Tom collapse map. And so Pt delta, and so sorry, uh, eta m tensor one is sigma minus n of Pt of i tensor the identity. i tensor, uh, i times the identity is just an embedding of uh, M inside uh, SN times M. And PT delta compose with eta M tensor one, therefore it's just PT of uh, I times the identity Am I doing this right? Oh no I'm... One second sorry oh yeah right that's m times m of course. Otherwise, the, the source and the target is not the same. Composing the, ident the delta, which is just the Pontryagin term of the of the of the embedding I was describing before. And now, the point is. I comma identity, which is an embedding of M into SM times M is isotopic to zero comma identity. And that's because you can just do a straight line homotopy. And the fact that the second component is the identity keeps you being an embedding all the time. So in fact, the first component, the one that was hard to get a handle on, is just irrelevant. We don't care about it. And Pontryagin term of zero comma identity, now you can just see it's just, uh, well, it, it's just the, just this map. It's just the, 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 the it's just the identity. Oh, sorry. Oh, minus TM. I had it. I had them. Um, okay, yeah, sigma M. Let me do care something. By, by direct inspection. And so we are done. This composite is the identity. Now, there, there is another diagram to check that's exactly identical and it's in the notes. So I think that in the interest of 
uh, not being too boring, I'll, I'll let it as, as an exercise. I mean, the other diagram is identical. And in the notes. The notes are already online on my web page, or at least they should be. So if you're curious, I mean, honestly, if you're curious, I suggest you do it on your own. Uh, it's, uh, it's really the same proof, but if you really want to see it written, it's on my notes. Questions about this proof? It's actually kind of weird because once you define evaluation and co-evaluation, it's just a straightforward check, essentially. And okay, I packaged this transversal diagram because I think the original paper just you know did it by hand, showing that these two maps are homotopic. But uh, it's a bit fiddly and it's neater if you package it in this lemma, but it's not really necessary. It's okay. Questions? No? Okay, let me say a couple of words about the case of manifolds with boundary. And just saying how you define evaluation and co-evaluation. And then uh, again, the diagram, I didn't even write that in the notes, honestly, the, the, the verification of the diagram for them, but it's the same, it's just more, it's just slightly trickier because you have a boundary you have to keep track of. But it's, the, the, the proof is really, really not different. Um, No, no, I noticed that the notes. Okay, I'll, have, I'll need to do a correction in the notes. Uh, but okay. So, folds with boundary. So let me first do the evaluation. So we have. M comma and a compact manifold with boundary. Then we can take the embedding of delta M into M times uh, the, the boundary of M. Oh, no, first I have to say, yeah, okay. Well, let me say, therefore this gives you a contriagin tom collapse map. Uh, like this. And yeah, I should say that uh, to get the Pontrain Tom collapse maps with manifold with boundaries, you have a neatness condition. I'll elaborate in a second uh, on the embedding. That just means that the boundary intersects transversely. In this case, it's, it's okay. Uh, and here, this is just uh, the bound delta M minus one because uh, the, the, the normal bundle here yeah, is. Uh, Opposite one plus the tangent bundle of delta m. And you can verify it. It's just the, it's the point that the tangent bundle of m restricted to the to delta m is a one plus the tangent bundle of delta m. I'll enter into more details about this identification, but for now it's not very important. And these maps to sigma, oh, sorry, plus sigma minus one, the sphere as before. 
with this key lower style. But then these maps here have a community diagram like this. That's OK. That's a very silly community diagram, but it's a community diagram nonetheless. And I can take vertical cofibers And this is the evaluation map that I need to build. Now for the, uh, for the co-evaluation map, I'll need a variant of the fundamental class for manifold suit boundary, which is trickier to define. Um, and it works like this. So you can, and you can embed M into DN for some big N such that the boundary of M Sorry, the, the, the M intersected the boundary of the disk is the boundary of M, and it's called neat, that is locally, is of this form. It's an embedding of this form. It's diffeomorphic to an embedding of uh, zero infinity times R N minus times rk inside zero infinity times rn. That you can do. That's, I mean, you need to prove it, but I gave a reference. It's, uh, where is it? I cannot find where I put my reference in the notes, but yeah, it, it is, there is a reference. I, I wrote it this morning, so it should be there. Um, okay, but you can, the point is that you can find such an embedding, and from such an embedding, you can get a Pontryagin Tom collapse map. So, you know, in a compatible way, because you can find normal bundles. You can find a normal bundles for M in the M, such that the restriction to the boundary is the normal bundle of the boundary into the boundary of the M. That's where the neatness condition is necessary. Uh, so you can find the Trinitone collapse map, which is Sn minus one, which is the boundary of the N, mapping to the Tom space of the normal boundary restricted to the N. This includes into the N, and this maps Tom space of the normal bundle. So you get a diagram of contracting Tom collapse maps. And therefore, after stabilizing and desuspending, you get a map like this. Minus one, minus tangent bundle of the boundary of M. This goes zero because, you know, that the N is actually contractible. And this goes to M TM. And now you use again the diagonal embedding here to get diagrams like this. I don't know where was I? Ah. Type. Delta loop star, and this is, you know, let me call it oof, J lower star. It's just that the J is just again this embedding. And again, you get a map on vertical co fibers. Okay. 
which I need to call the co-evaluation method. And yeah. And okay, and that's I think all that I want to say in the case of manifolds with boundaries. You can see that the construction is pretty much the same. You just need to be a bit careful about how you embed your manifolds. And the proof is also pretty much the same. It's just going carefully through the motions and, and seeing. And I guess I should state the theorem of the uh, duality with boundary, which is actually the theorem that the approved. As I said, the case of manifolds without boundary was uh, proven by other guys before. Uh, Coef exhibit uh, M minus Tm as the dual. Sigma infinity M. Okay. Ooh. Okay, to conclude that the duality, I want to leave you with an exercise. Because we have a cofiber sequence. Now Tm goes into M, sorry, plus goes into M mod Dm. And therefore, a boundary map. from sigma infinity m of dm to sigma of sigma infinity dm plus. And now we know the dual of both of these guys. And the dual of this map is, uh, so what do I need? M minus one minus the tangent space of Dm, sorry, boundary, going to M minus Tm. Induced map by the inclusion. And the hint to prove it, sigma M, the sigma boundary of M plus is W modulo the boundary, where W is M times the interval 0, 1. And I think this is going to end up in the exercise sheet, actually. Uh, we're going to need it, though. So, uh, the, the reason I'm, and it's perhaps cheating leaving it to you as an exercise, but it's not hard and it's instructive and uh, Okay. Questions? Okay. Because our next goal is to prove uh, what was the last theorem in this class in the, in the plan I had. I think I want to add another one afterwards, depending on how much time do we have left. But at least this was the, the, the last full thing. And the last thing I'll certainly ask at the exam. I don't think I want to ask about the Adam spectral sequence at the exam, if some of you are interested in taking the exam. Manifolds with structure and boredism. So, uh, 
Our next goal is to prove the Pontryagin Tom theorem. Uh, that is very interesting because it allows us to, to tell in a very concrete way what is the homology theory um, represented by a, a Tom spectrum in a very geometric, it gives a very geometric and concrete description. And this is a bridge that allows people to, to go from problems about manifolds, problem, geometric problems about manifolds, to problems about the homotopy type of Tom spectra. And I'll give an example at the end with the Steenrod problem, the, the, how to reformulate the Steenrod problem uh, for, uh, for in terms of Tom spectra and how this, for example, makes it completely trivial rationally. And this is actually, is actually the approach that Tom uh, used to prove the Steenrod problem, to, so, to, not to prove, to solve. The Steenrod problem is a question. Finding the answer, and in fact, that's the whole reason why Tom developed this whole uh, this whole Ambaradan that we are discussing now. So, okay, so from now on, we fix a map psi from B to B O. It's just a fixed map. Uh, and uh, I'll give a bunch of examples of, of such maps and how they have geometric meaning. But we have it. So definition, let V from X to B O a virtual vector bundle of rank zero a psi structure on V is just a lift of V along psi. And here uh, we need to be a bit careful because we are working in infinity category of spaces. So there are two ways you can say this. You can ask that psi is a vibration and ask for a strict lift or you can ask for just a map and then lift is the atom of a lift comes with a homotopy. Oh, sorry, it's this way. Uh, and then call it, um, how do they call it? Peak psi. And I actually prefer this with the homotopy because I think it clarifies uh, a couple of examples. But uh, of course, uh, Either, either approach is meaningful and has the same meaning. Okay. Good. So let me give a bunch of examples for these things. Well, okay, the first, the first silly example, psi equals the identity uh, is just uh, no data. So a vector bundle with psi structure is just a vector bundle. Oh, and sorry, I should say if V has not rank zero, forgot, before I give the example, I should tell you what it means for if V has not rank zero, a psi structure on V is a psi structure on V minus the rank of V. And that's possibly the, the most boring definition you can give, but. Uh, it's, it's going to be good enough for all the applications. So, okay. Okay, uh, sorry, let's go back to the examples. So another interesting example, you can take psi is BSO going to BO is the fiber, remember of the determinant map from BO to BC2. And then we saw that a psi structure is just an HZ orientation. And in fact, it's this is also the classical notion of orientation for a vector bundle. Uh, 
you can, if you unwrap everything, you can say you can choose charts such that the transition maps between the charts always have determinant one. That's what this is saying. Another example is Xi from BU to BO, and this is called a complex structure. Because this is saying, well, okay, our real vector bundle is coming from a complex vector bundle and we are forgetting the complex structure. Well, okay, we are rebooting it here. Okay. Let me give a couple more examples. Xi, just the map from the point. So here note that uh, the, uh, the lift of course is no data, but the homotopy is data. And going essentially a size structure is a null homotopy of the map from V, uh, of the map V. And so this is called a stable framing. And as an exercise, you can check that if V is a normal vector bundle, a stable framing is an equivalence class of isomorphisms. V plus Rn is Rm. where the two isomorphisms are, are equivalent if they are the same after adding if they're after adding enough copies of r so if if n were zero this would just be a framing right giving a basis for this is a trivialization for our vector bundle but here we are stable so we're not uh, we, we are we don't have a framing we have just a framing after we add a sufficiently big vector bundle a trivial vector bundle okay and that's the last thing i want to the last example uh, suppose we have some map xi from b to bo and to y space we can get xi y is just the composite b times y projecting to b going to BO, then a psi y structure is just a psi structure plus a map x to y. It has nothing to do with the vector bundle anymore. That, that's going to be very useful, actually. It's, it's a trick, perhaps, but it's a useful trick. Um, sorry, a question um, about the stable framing thing. Uh, so why why isn't this just telling you that the vector bundle is trivial? Uh, well, I mean, the vector bundle is not necessarily trivial because um, this is a, it's a map from, you know, from BON to BO. It's that composite is, is null homotopic. Ah, ah, yes, yes, sure. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So for example, the tangent bundle of Sn is, a, is the standard example of such guy. It becomes trivial after adding one copy of the trivial vector bundle. If you want another way of saying this, it's a path in the K-theory space. In, sorry, it's a path in map X K O from V, from the class of V to the, the base point. Yes, yes, thanks. That's another way of saying it. And that's actually the way you generalize it motivically, if you're interested. In it. But, okay. Okay. So, okay, these are enough. Are there further questions about these examples? It is a very general notion. You can play with it a lot. Uh, uh, but. So definition, we say that a Xi structure on a smooth manifold M is a Xi structure 
on, well, dimension of m minus the tangent bundle of m. I would like that, or, or equivalent minus the tangent bundle of m. But it's very easy to get confused if you do not remember uh, the shift. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll try to do my best to leave the shift in everything I write. Uh, if I make some mistakes, I'm sorry. Uh, the temptation to drop the shift is very, very strong, uh, even if it makes life more confusing. Okay. Okay, I need uh, one additional construction before I give the main definition of the theorem I, I want to discuss. No, note that the manifold here could have boundary, by the way. Uh, this manifold, this smooth manifold M. So in fact, let M boundary M as smooth manifold with boundary. Then we can take Tm and restrict it to the boundary. And this, as I said, is a copy of the trivial vector bundle plus the tangent space of the boundary of M. But here we'll need to be a bit careful because there are two possible such identifications. And we ask it identified with the inward pointing normal. It's not really important which identification you choose, but you have to choose one and be consistent throughout the theory and always use this identification. Um, and by which I mean, you know, you have at the boundary here, here you have the tangent of delta m and the, the copy of r here is set such that the basis vector points inward. That's the identification I'm making. And uh, yeah, it's very, very important that you choose one consistently. Let's move the, the drawing here, perhaps. OK. Uh, therefore, by a disidentification, uh, we can identify yeah, dim m minus t m restricted to the boundary of m with dim boundary of m minus the tangent of the boundary of m. And so we can pull back a size structure from m to the boundary of m. And uh, yeah. And sometimes I'll, you know, if phi is the excise structure over M, sometimes I'll perhaps write it as phi boundary, the induced one. Okay. Oh, of course, um, if you have two manifolds with size structure, let me put it as a remark. If m phi m prime phi prime manifolds with psi structure, we can construct a, a, a psi structure 
and the disjoint union. That's okay. That's perhaps a silly remark, but it's an important remark because I will put the definition. So let n greater or equal than zero. The n dimensional cobordism group uh, with size structures structure. Uh, maybe I should say of manifolds with size structure, but this is long enough to say, which is O psi n is the quotient. of the monoid of uh, isomorphic equivalence classes, let's say, of closed, this is compact without boundary, manifolds with psi structures by the submonoid of the boundaries of compact manifolds with psi structure. So I have this monoid, uh, oh, and the monoid, uh, sorry, uh, I don't have space. Uh, the monoid and since I under this joint union because otherwise, why would I have shown you that this joint union makes sense? So uh, as usual, it goes the, the, the caveat that if you have a manifold with size structure, sorry, if you have a monoid and a submonoid, the quotient is not, the definition of the quotient is slightly tricky. Uh, and that's, uh, an element is not the, 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 the kernel of the projection to the quotient is not necessarily the submonoid you're quotienting by. It's possibly bigger. There are all these elements that are stably in your submonoid. That is, if you add an element of your submonoid, then you, you are in your submonoid. It's sort of like. That's okay. Okay, is this definition clear? Uh, so this is a monoid, uh, but I called it the cobordism group. So the first thing I want to say is to show you that it is actually a group. So so the name is justified. So let M phi, well, the class of M phi, I guess, here. We want to construct an inverse. So let us consider M times the interval, the cylinder on M. This is a many, this is a compact manifold with boundary. And the tangent space here is, well, the, the pullback of the tangent space of M plus a copy of the trivial vector bundle. And again, here we could choose two identifications. We want to be consistent. We choose the uh, left to right orientation. And so I'm choosing essentially the canonical trivialization of the tangent bundle of the brackets zero one. There are two, of course, but I'm choosing. And so the 
the restriction of this guy to the boundary is is two copies. But note that we are choosing the orientation so that, such that here the identity and here is one comma minus one. Since we always go inward. But now we can lift phi to m times zero one. After all, you have these guides, the projection is an equivalence and this map, this diagram commute. So I can lift this phi to a phi tilde here along these equivalence. To phi tilde. And again, there are homotopies here. I'm writing homotopy coherent diagrams, but the formalism take, keeps track of it for us, such that this, the restriction to m times zero is phi. And so the boundary of m of the, the cylinder, comma phi tilde, is m comma phi, this joint union, another copy of m, with something that I'm going to call minus phi. And if you, can, if you work it out carefully, you can actually describe what this minus phi is. There is an explicit formula, but I won't do it. Uh, the tricky part is actually that most of the modification actually happens in the homotopy, not in the map. And so you have that m comma phi plus m comma minus phi isn't it zero. And that was what we wanted to prove. Okay. Good. Because now it's time. So suppose we have n comma phi uh, closed manifold, n manifold. Actually, let me fix the dimension because it's going to be easier to write with psi structure. then we get a class m comma phi in pi n of m psi. Oh, I didn't say this. m psi is the Tom spectrum of psi from B to B O. And we get it in this way. m comma phi is the composite that works like this. So we have from here, we have the fundamental class of M. And this is the map induced by phi lower star. Okay, that's the crucial definition. So I hope it's it's clear what it's doing. What it's doing. Okay. So I need a couple of remark. So remark one is that the fundamental class of these is just the sum. And that's because uh, m distant to you know, m prime minus the tangent bundle is just 
with some of the tangent bundles and the fundamental classes, the, some of the fundamental classes. These, uh, well, this is, you, you, if you look at the definition of the fundamental class, it's clear because you can find an embedding where M and prime are separated with completely disjoint normal bundles. And you just get the thing that you get. Moreover, if M psi is the boundary of some M tilde, uh, phi tilde, I want to say that the class is zero. And why is that? We can we can factor these. Phi as so we have S and S. This goes to m n minus t m, and now this goes to m tilde m plus one minus the tangent bundle of m tilde, and this goes to m psi. It goes j lower star, where j is the map from m, the inclusion of the boundary. But now, remember this was the boundary homomorphism uh, and I claim that this composite is non homotopic by the exercise I assigned before. Because this map, so this map, this eta m is just, maybe I should say it, it is just the dual of the map from n to the point. And this is the dual of the boundary homomorphism plus to sigma plus. So they're composite. So J lower star eta n is the dual of, oh, sorry, this is not n tilde. Uh, of course, this is n tilde mod m. Uh, oh, but well, once you've is the dual of this composite here, and this is new homotopic. No, oh, sorry, this one. So, uh, the class of boundaries is zero. Oh, and the, I guess I should check also the, the class of the empty manifold is zero, but that's pretty much by definition. Therefore, the class of M, sorry, M phi goes to the class of M phi induces a group homomorphism. Uh, what did I call it? I didn't. Okay. Oh my god. Psi n into pi n m psi. Oh, really? I didn't. Oh, well. And okay, as I promised, I can arrive at the statement of the contrarian tom theorem. And uh, 
I should perhaps say, if I understand my history correctly, Pontryagin proved the case of the stable framing and Tom proved the general case. And these, the, the, the group, the homomorphism, omega psi m, psi m, m psi is um, isomorphism. And that's the next theorem we're going to prove. Uh, the proof takes a couple of pages, so I don't think I'll be able to do the whole, to, to, to only do the proof next time. I'll think a bit what to do. But I first want to give you a corollary. So let X be any space. Then Pi n psi tensor sigma infinity plus x is the group of Bordism classes of uh, manifolds with psi structure and a map to x. So this is the, the homology theory induced by, by the Tom spectrum is boards and classes. And the proof is, is a cheaty proof if you want. M xi tensor sigma infinity plus of x is just M of xi x using this xi x I defined before. And so it follows from the, the Pontryagin Tom theorem. And there is actually also a geometric description of the cohomology, but that's harder to prove and harder to state. And I always get it wrong. And um, I think of yeah, using bundles of manifolds over X instead of. Uh, but then defining cobordism is, is, is hard. Uh, So, okay, I think that's a good place as any to stop. So next time I'll prove the pontryagin tom theorem. And after which, um, after which, I don't know. I'll see if I can say something about spectral sequences or not. We'll see how much time do we have. Questions? I think this is a very beautiful theorem, actually. Uh, as you will see, yeah, Monday I also want to say a couple of words about the Steenroad problem and how these, uh, how these, uh, this theorem allow you to translate uh, the Steenroad problem to a question about the homotopy type of MXI. Steenroad problem is a problem about which homology classes can be realized by uh, maps from manifolds. You can see now how this might be relevant. Okay, if there are no questions, let me stop the recording.